What's up guys, in this video I'm going to explain how to manage your dot .files with a program called GNU Sto, which is my favorite way to uh, manage my dot .files. Um, I'm also going to kind of briefly explain what dot .files are and hopefully by the end of the video you'll be able to manage your dot .files across multiple different systems very easily. So how I manage my dot .files is, um, if you know anything about dot .files, you know most of your, you know usually when people are talking about dot .files, they're talking about configuration files, not like all of the hidden files that you have because if we go into our home directory here we can see everything that starts with a dot is just a hidden file and these could be logs they could be caches they could be configuration but usually we're talking about configuration so we're going to cd into dot config which is where you probably should be keeping most of the configuration for the programs that you use and basically um, you're going to notice that a few of these I keep under management and these are all the ones that have sim links. Uh, that's why they're a different color here, right? So all of these are sim linked to somewhere else, um, hence the coloring, like I said, and I keep them all in one place. So how I get them here is essentially I'll go back here. I'm going to go into a directory called mock files, which is a git repo. You can see this master here. You, it just kind of denotes that it's a git repo. And you can see that I'm managing all of these guys on Git, right? Or through through Git, through a version control system, right? So now all I have to do to keep them in my .config folder is I could stow all of them with uh, stow uh, and then star slash, and that will stow, that will stow every single thing here. If I just do stow, it'll try to stow like um, stow star. It'll just it'll try to do the README too. So if you do the slash, it'll just pick up and like the PNG here. It'll if you just do the slash, the star slash, it'll only target directories. Now the other thing I can do is I can just stow one directory if I want. So like say I wanted to do alacrity and I only wanted my alacrity uh, config. I could just do stow alacrity and then it would be in my dot config, uh, in my home dot config. So I'll show you. I'll get rid of one and then I'll show you exactly what it does. I think that would be the best way to see it. So if we go into dot config, right, and then I, if I remove alacrity and see how it's not in here anymore, it used to be up at the top there and it's not here anymore. Um, what we'll do now is we'll stow, whoops, let's do stow alacrity. Okay, and that's all I had to do. And now if you come over here, alacrity's back in here. So, and it has all of, you know, the, the, the dot or the configuration here too, right? So that's how easy it is. Now, the same thing works with Z shell. The same thing works with all these things. They immediately just get thrown right in here. And if I just do stow star all, it'll put everything in there. Um, there's really no need to do it, but I can do that right now without hurting anything. Like it, it all just works fine. Um, if you do it right now, it's, it's, it's already what's in there, so it's no problem at all. So that's how easy it is. It takes like two seconds. Now, here's the hard part. Um, understanding how to configure all of this so that it does what you want it to. <laughs> and I know that made it look really easy, and it actually is really easy, but you just need to understand uh, the convention for using Sto. Now, here's the convention for using Sto. So... Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger. So what we can, what we notice here is that I'm keeping mock files in my home directory, right? So if I do PWD here, mock files I'm keeping in home, Chris, mock files. Now then I name each, this isn't super important, but it's the way that I do it. I name each one of these directories and you can get creative with this later on if you want to. And you can think of different ways to get creative, like grouping some of these programs, but don't think about that right now. Um, I name each one of these configurations after what's going to be in there. So Alacrity has the Alacrity stuff in there. Uh, font config has the font config stuff in there. Kitty has the Kitty config in there. Same with um, Ranger. Uh, Skippy, if you know what Skippy is, it's like another program. And then I think the most requested uh, people always ask me is my Z shell and like how can I get that really fast? Well, all you would really have to do again is just stow ZSH and that would be it. Now, the next thing is after noticing like, okay, so mock files is in my home directory and then I have a name for each config that I want, I have a directory for it, right? The next thing is just go inside of that directory 
And now pretend you're in your home directory. Once you're in here, pretend that you are in your home directory. So how would you set up a path inside of this directory so that it would be like in your home directory? And I'll, so, I'll show you what that means. So if I'm in my home directory, I can cd into .config, all right? If I'm in this directory, I can cd into .config, great. Now, once I'm in .config, I can go into Alacrity, all right. If I'm over here, I can go into Alacrity, great. And that's it, just keep your config inside of there and just it'll go wherever, wherever you point it to in your home directory, right? So for instance, this works with .config because I put .config in there because remember what we do when we're in here is once we're in that top level one. So again, I'll show you and I'll clean this up. Once we're in the top level one inside of mock, mock files, like once I'm in Alacrity, right? Then I pretend I'm in my home directory. So we would expect to see .config in here and then we would expect to see Alacrity and then we would see that. This will also work um, if you decide not to put uh, the .config in there. So we put .config in here because we want to keep all of our .files in our .config. But you know, some you might want to keep in your home directory, like in terms of like some of these X files and stuff like that. So you can see like X profile, X in RC, X resources. I just keep these in my home directory still. Now, maybe you could keep these in, in .config, but I still keep them here. But again, I'm pretending I'm in my home directory. And uh, let's go back here. I'm pretending I'm in my home directory. And if I do ls-a, you'll notice that, um, let's see, where are these? X in RC, X profile, and X resources are all right there in my home directory, just like how they're over here right there. Now, once you have all the files set up however you want, and you'll notice all of them follow a very, very, very similar pattern, right? Like basically the exact same pattern, except for stuff I want right in my home directory, like the X stuff. Like if I go into, um, uh, let's see, font config, right? Well, I don't see anything here, but that's because I'm pretending I'm in my home directory, so it's in .config, all right? And it's in font config, and then it's fonts.conf, right? Same, uh, same thing for every single other one. I showed you Alacrity, I showed you font config. Let's see if Kitty's any different. It's not. I'm pretending I'm in my home directory. See, dot config, Kitty, there you go. So now I, I already showed you basically, you know, if I got rid of every single one of those things and then I just did stow star slash, all of them would just be right in there. Now the other cool magic part of this is that I can just keep this all in a Git repo and everything just works. It's There's no real problem. The hardest part is understanding those paths, right? Once you have those paths down, you can keep all of your stuff in a Git repo, pull this down on any machine that you want, just run stow, the name of the thing, or star slash, and you'll either get everything or just the configuration for a, a like particular program. Now, I just really wanted to stress like the, the hard part of understanding like how to set all of these paths up because once you set up the paths, everything becomes extremely easy and you don't really have to think much anymore. Um, it's also a good way like, you know, to, to separate everything. So like, I don't know how get bare repos work, but if I pull this down, right, I can choose which things I want and which things I don't want, right? So for work, I don't really, like I don't have a Linux system at work. I have a, uh, I have a Mac, right? So a lot of this X stuff doesn't matter. Um, I don't use Kitty at work. I don't use, I don't think I use Alacrity at work. I might use Alacrity at work. Um, but I don't use, obviously, Amphora. I don't use Kava at work. I don't use, I think I'm, no, I don't even think I use Font Config at work, right? So like these things, these things don't matter. So I just wanna be able to pick and choose whatever I want. And so it's kind of nice, you can just get this like a la carte, um, like dot file uh, um, config and just move it wherever you want. So like in between different uh, laptops, your work system, your desktop, whatever. Right. So that's pretty much it. I hope that I explained that uh, pretty well. I think you probably probably should understand <laughs> how it works and why you might want to do it. Um, if you want to find all of my uh, configs, you can find, find it under mock files over on my Git repo. 
Um, you can see all of the paths here. It might even make it more simple to look at it from here and how they're all like name of thing, dot config, name of thing, and then the file will be in there. So hopefully that also helps you kind of uh, see how that works. Um, commonly people just want to use my Z shell and so I just put a line in here for Z shell. Um, but if you want to get everything, again, you can do a star slash there. Uh, just make sure that you do install Stow. So if you want to install Stow, like it's it's just it's in pretty much every single. Like if you're on Ubuntu, you can just do sudo apt install Stow like that, like this. Or if you're on Arch Linux, um, you can just do I think it's yeah sudo pacman flag s and then just do Stow. So and then that's really all you need. Um, I know Stow isn't necessarily for for uh, dot files or whatever, like I think there are solutions like for dot files, but I really just like to use this tool because it's uh, it's available in all the repos. It's been around for a very long time, and in my opinion, once you understand like how the paths should all work, it's very very intuitive. And adding a new config to this is as simple as just adding its name, adding a couple paths, and then just that's it, right? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Again, you can get everything here. Um, it's also a good place to, I have a place where I keep all my, my programs in here too. So like I'll just cat all my programs into a file and then I'll also keep them up here so I can know like, all right, if I am getting a new machine, I just need to install all of these programs and then I have all of the same stuff that I have on the old machine. Um, so it's a good way for me to keep track of all the programs that are installed on my system as well. So that's pretty much it for this here. Um, if you want to continue following the channel, if you want to see all the stuff I'm doing, you can follow me over on YouTube. I just did a video on Z Shell. Some people are asking me like how to get my dot files and this is how you do that. Uh, you can follow me over on Twitter. Um, I don't post that often, but when I do, it's usually like videos like this. Uh, you can follow me over on Odyssey. I'd rather you follow me over there than YouTube. Um, sometimes I stream on Twitch. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can support it over on Patreon. And you can also follow me over on my blog. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.